And I mean, that's what um, I'm here for. I mean, the, the, the conclusion of that, just for anyone who wants to check back on that, because, you know, you got these scholars that politen them out there, you know, and it's like, okay, can we get to something new? And they even ask, do you know about seven? Yeah, yeah, well, why don't y'all start talking about some of that stuff? Not like you're following me. Like, I got to follow the truth, too. So, you know, it, to, to, through truth, you will survive the light eater, but you will have to become completely truth because truth never fails and it never fades. So we can always stand on there and, and be comfortable and in a great level of foundation. But I urge in this cosmic storm that we're experiencing that someone begins to seek truth in order to balance things out. So what happens is, is that in the Sumerian text, uh, in a nutshell, we're dealing with the Sumerian construct. Like the Sumerians were like the ones who were really hating on the Kemetans. And you'll notice that if you look into their literature. But instead of going into that now, because I think that's a question that's reserved for later, if we can get to that point, you have to understand their mm -hmm. discussion of the MEs and exactly how powerful the MEs were and what exactly they are. And what they are is how it come to us as language. Now, language is obviously compressed into a, a symbol. And then when they're broken mm -hmm. apart, those symbols become... Uh, fractalized, okay? And that's a program. That's what COBOL, BASIC, mm -hmm. FORTRAN, all these are symbols and Through programs. That. Even uh, mathematics, division symbols, all those symbols mean something. And it's when I tell you that, it becomes obvious what symbols mean, like division. Mm -hmm. You see the line in between. You see the two on each side. Mm -hmm. and then there's wall in between them. That's how you call division. You build a wall. So anyway, mm -hmm. if you see the program, as the ME, you have to understand the ancient languages contain power. The only reason why you would use the vocal cords was to evoke. There was no other reason. You needed to bring mm. something in mm. from the, from the uh, wow. what we would call spiritual reality, which is inception through your thought, and then run it through your own chakra centers and then give it life through the voice that comes out of your mouth. And then based on your own intentions and whether you believed in yourself, it would determine if it came out completely or distorted because it's going to come out. That's what we have to realize. Like mm. everything that we say, everything that we do is going to come out in some shape, form and fashion. And some people need to be a little bit glad that they don't have, a, have as much power as they used to, because if they believe the same stuff they believe now, they would have destroyed themselves. So the reality wow. is, is that once again, when you have power, you have to be careful what you say. You have to be careful how you mm -hmm. say it. And you have to be careful the reflections of the mind, meaning don't allow the mind to go into judgments. Because when you judge, you wow. shall be judged. And that means something else beside what people think it does in the dogmatic tradition. But we'll go on. So the MEs are these languages and they're the codes. And these codes are encrypted. So it basically comes out as a symbol. And then when someone has possession of that symbol, that's why you see Marduk encrusted with all these symbols. He's got the five and the six. They call him 50. Uh, probably 50 cent mm. is dealing with mm. Marduk, mm. but mm. you know that's just for another what? conversation. So what happens is 50 yeah, it. uses the yeah. stars in order to, as MEs, which are programs, which are languages that run in people's mind. Now, if we believe for one moment that we think the same as someone who began speaking, speaking Chinese, it's because we're still into that whole idea that there's no other worlds out there and that we're still the, you know, all of the supremacy right. that we hate so much. And this could be any race because they would believe that people are thinking the same way as them, even though our native tongues are different and the environment we're raised in is different. The ground that we walk on is different and different in the sense that the body has been split because that was Marduk. Marduk split the body of Tiamat. Tiamat is earth. So what we're standing mm -hmm. on, that's why I say oh, earth is alive. Are you damn right? is each body, even islands, could be a different being entirely. There's a map out of, you know, what archons took on, what foundations that people are standing on that they're calling their city, their town, or whatever. So what Whoa. happens is, is that these MEs are what is traded in a tense amongst these entities. And every time a new one comes out, like English, English, English 26 letters plus 26 letters is 52 letters, 52 letters, 52 weeks in a year. 52 weeks in a mm -hmm. year is one annu, 52 cards come out. 52 cards are the, is the English tarot. And then from that 52 cards, you get all of the houses. And then from those houses, when the king and the pawn go back in the same box, that's the end of the card game. So that means that, again, tarot is rotate or sator, which is actually Kabbalistic for meaning the wheel. And this mm -hmm. wheel is what's referred to as the zodiac. So when you put the wheel in your mind, the animalistic forms and zoomorphications that are encoded within the symbols actually unlock into the person's mind and move in the direction in which the language is configured. And then they take mm. on the beast because the beast is the encoding of the zodiacal archons that move 360 degrees around the circle 
and that's what's known as the craft or masonry, a builder, a builder mm -hmm. of a gigantic body or a cadman, an androgen, not a male, not a female, but both with the ability oh, to create. Yeah. And that's why earth is here because it can self create. It's called parthenogenic. They call it that old serpent. Mm -hmm. The old serpent is because the only parthenogenic beings that really ever graced the, the whole system of ecology was the serpent. Go look at it on Wikipedia. The being can produce on its own without any other opposing pole. This comes out to us as the hermaphrodite. The hermaphrodite mm -hmm. is the tetragrammaton, yad he va he, meaning male, female, male, female. Mm -hmm. And then what that mm -hmm. is, is that's a cognate. It's not necessarily the original being at all, but it's a cognate of a, a masculine androgen. That's why they call it the lost mm -hmm. word because no more masculine androgens are really born on the planet. You don't see hermaphrodites born anymore, but we mm -hmm. have a couple to show that it does happen. So that's right. again, gets us into the XY chromosomes and exactly why the male is a variation of the female. Anytime you're incarnating into a physical system with XX is running around, if you're a Y, that definitely means that you've come from outside the envelope. And, uh, but again, let, let's make this very simple. So what happens is, mm. is that in this whole process that we're, we're going through right now, knowledge is everywhere. Power mm -hmm. is everywhere. And it just is about whether we're going to go get it. So at the end of the day, or at the beginning of it for that matter, one has to really start looking within themselves and saying, okay, all right, how much more do I need to really hear for me to make a move? Because mm. I, I, at even the first thing, the second thing, the third thing, or the fourth thing, I was there. But why, what are you going to do with all of this? Like, how does it change you? Is English now so weak that even speaking to you in it doesn't allow you to recognize who I am, that I'm you? Like, I just made the proper steps and had the right alchemical formula so that I can come and bring it back to you. That's the only reason why I'm actually here. I was already gone. I had already seen the, the beyond. Like I saw it for real. I wasn't under no substances or nothing. I had waxed mm -hmm. so strong because I got really serious about it for a moment. And then it started to really respond. And I said, hmm, so it is real. Now I got to wipe everything. Because if this, what I'm witnessing right now, is not in at least one subject in school, the great deception is upon us. But instead of going into a fear, I'm not scared because I had just died mm -hmm. then. That's why I say you can die. <laughs> you, some people experience death. Well, so once you die, mm -hmm. it weakens the very, it weakens the hold of fear <laughs> because then you realize, hey, it's not all so bad. There's mm -hmm. nothing that's bad except for when we make it bad. It's the gateway to life again. So this is when you get a frequency shift. You wake yourself up, basically. You collapse a timeline. See, I'm not talking hocus pocus here. You even now use a D-wave as a quantum mainframe and shows you the whole process of a quantum computer is so that you can build, work, and develop things in a space in which you can do that in. See, Earth doesn't have the space to harness your vision. So we do that in other realms in order to bring it to us mm -hmm. in the time mm -hmm. in which we need it. And generally we will pack it in some type of organic, meaning the most organic life form, the most organic substances, that's how we'll bring it. So what is the definition of organic versus inorganic then? When I go to the, 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 the annuals of the 101 chemistry, the difference between organic and inorganic is organic life forms are formed with carbon. That's mm. why they classify cri many crystals as inorganic because they're formed with silicone and so silicone and carbon have a very unique relationship, but it's more than pumping shots in your butt and putting stuff in your titties. So what <laughs> happens is, is that when we realize that connection with carbon and we realize where the organic mm. life forms, we'll understand why this cube, which is the symbolic symbol of carbon, encases all the knowledge that still needs to be unpacked. And so we have those cubes because the cubes are, that's the pyramids. That's the best unit to store information in. That's why when you go to the hard drive, they just show you these squares and blocks because mm -hmm. that's how you can stack things up. It's like Legos. So it's the best way to compress information, but it's not information only. It's also memories. So in that compression contains giga, what do they call it? Jewels 
of energy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that's why even when your chakras open up and you're all in there crying and acting crazy, you're giving off <laughs> energy. And then the cosmos is round because if somebody was just thinking about so what is the cosmos or God or the universe has to do all the, what do you mean? It's perfect. There's a good, there's a bad, and there's a neutral. And it keeps those in balance. And the cosmos is working a perpetual energy program. It's not thinking. So while we're in this, we can decide, are we going to be the millstone or the grain? Because surely if one just stands around when big planets and, and are moving around and princes mm -hmm. and lords and all the, what they call, we're, hey, we're wrestling against principalities. Like that was the last text message I got. <laughs> if you're standing around when the principalities are moving around and you're not realizing you're beyond Godhead then you can subject it become some slave on another realm, whether it's in your mind Whoa. or it's where you're walking or it's in your body or all of them, because it's mind, body and soul is at stake. Mind, body, spirit, excuse me, is at stake. Mm -hmm. And so this is this is where we're at. And like I said, for people who are just you want to process information, hey, you can listen to this thousands of times. But remember, I live there. I've been involved. I dealt with all of the misfortunes that come to one in reality, you know, being a great person, but never being given the opportunity, you know, living in crazy household, crazy mom, no dad, all of that. Mm -hmm. And what I'll tell you is all you have to do to get out of that vortex is drop the weight. And the weight, just mm -hmm. like if we're in a ship and we're, you know, it's about to give out. We're going to tell you, hey, empty, how much stuff is in the cargo? Well, we got 5,000 5, kiloton. Drop it. <laughs> because yeah. that weight is what's causing you going to fall into the vortex with the weight. The weight could be too many materialistic objects, too many states of consciousness that don't have no end to them, you know, no solution to them. You're in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. So all of those different things, but mainly these religions, these gods drop the weight. Even like some people, they, they're now making the commitments external. You can't externalize mm -hmm. phenomenal cosmic power. Like <laughs> look at one of those movies. You see how the demon act when you bring it back into the realm? They don't want to be here. You're talking about too mm -hmm. much power within the small envelope. So you can't externalize all powerful things. You must keep it contained in your own vessel. See, the body is the alchemical vessel. They're the same size of the beakers that were used by the greatest alchemists were co correctly and accurately sized to be the same as what was in the human body in order to accomplish the great arcana. The great arcana is how we can eat a cheeseburger even and then produce a seed of life. We can distill somehow life. Remember, the philosopher's stone is a concentration of whatever force that rides through everything that allows it to become alive. It's believed that that force can be synthesized, meaning concentrated. Then it could actually reverse the, the, the pangs of death, like basically make a person that's old young again, basically dirt back into gold. So what happens mm -hmm. is, is that when we look at what was really going on, we realize, oh, shoot, they went external again. Stay out of the external. The internal, the alchemical vessel you already have. The holy chalice and all the rest of any kind of relics are all inside. That's what they were all references to. Sure, there was always external correspondences, but they always were subject to what happens in external realities. Breakdown, decay, all of what goes on in the realm of a life eater. And I only say that because, hey, I don't look the same as when I got here. I'm getting older. I'm wiser, but I feel the strain of having to continuously stay in communion with all the energetic fields that are around us. This is an orgasmic life form. Nobody is, nobody is exempt from it, meaning that there is a mating going on with you, what you breathe. Your oxygen carbon is coming into carbon dioxide and your your pheromones, the essence that's coming off you. All of that is being going into another life form and it is utilizing that and then exuding something that you may in turn attempt to do the same thing with. So that's called a symbiote. But if you get into a vampiric relationship where, again, you got your energy being brokered out by Eve angels and galactic brokers and all the rest of the gods that, you know, then come into the position of being controller over your life, then you end up having an energy link. And just like any ship, when your fuel is leaking, it ain't going to be long before you're stranded. So that's where I find my people. 
And my people are all these people stranded on the rock with the engine out. And what we're about to do and been doing is we're going to jumpstart this thing. And instead of looking to something external to do that for us, we're going to create it within by doing it on ourselves. That's why they tell you, hey, be the change you're looking for. Yeah. Convert this vehicle back to what it used to be. Raise the jet. All you have to do is use your consciousness. I don't care if you're fat. I don't care if you got one leg or half retarded. If you mm -hmm. comprehend what I'm saying to one degree or another, and I just speak in tones, people could just, someone in China could hear this and know exactly what I'm talking about. If they just stop for a moment, turn off the monkey mind and really listen to what exactly is being said through the tones and vibrations, we're here for you. So that's, that's what we're talking about here. And it's such a shock though, because like I said, I look for the knowledge. And I was like, you know, mm -hmm. what's happening? Like I went through, and you know, I've gone through 20,000 books. Like I never, I have other ways to do things. So the reality is, is that if I got to take down 5,000 books, like I'll convert all the books into audio and have some computer read them and just learn what the, how the computer reads and then be doing that while I'm working out at the gym. So people are like, what do you listen to? <laughs> I'm like, man, this book. They're like, how do you work out and listen to books? It's because this thing serves me. This beast serves me. I tell it what to do. I'm on the, I'm on the throne. So that means I'm actually in the corpus callosum in the top part of my brain doing the arbitration between the gunads, basically between the universe that's in conflict, universe, united, uni, verse in conflict, all the parts of the body who are the archons, each struggling to be in their house. Hey, it's my time. And then doing that right over the top of when there's a time and place for everything. And it's not time for that. You see what I mean? It's like the body will move out of its own cosmic order and start crashing its organs, which are planets, into each other. And then once one of your planets crash, one of your ships go bad, now it's going to weigh heavy on the other ones. So they're willing to communicate and to get their stuff together. I'm saying metaphorically talking to your body. They're willing to, hey, you know, if you crash your spleen, it's going to put so much work on your kidneys and your heart that each one of them are going to go out next. And then your own bridge. See, the thing I mentioned today, all of what I said can be seen internally or externally. You have to put then the components back in place to being inside of you. And everything that I mentioned was all going on inside. So it's like one of those movies to where you get to the end and you realize that, oh, I totally, that's, that's cool. That was a good movie. I thought it was something else. I'm talking about what's right. going on inside of you. And then how to label this stuff properly in order for you to jump on the battlefield of Arunja, defeat a couple of the gods, the, you know, the Vasuki, the, the snake, and all of them from sitting on top of the chakras acting like they running things. To restore order, that means to actually put the body back into check. And then by first stopping what creates a bad ecosystem when one animal is feeding on another animal for its flesh. Take the rope that was given to you. That's why they show you the corn. It's a symbol of we gave you vegetables. A monkey eats vegetables. A gorilla eats vegetables, rip your arm off. A horse will eat vegetables and rip your arm off. So it's not about, hey, you need this stuff. You need creatine, a complete protein, and amino acid. So you need myothon to go to Amazon to get hemp, pea protein, and, and uh, brown rice protein. And then you need... Uh, uh, yeah, so that's what you need. You need those three, a creatine. You go to Dr. Kassar's site, type in creatine and get the little $15 bag of creatine that you don't need but a teaspoon every other day of. And that's all meat will ever give you. I'm at 200 pounds right now and I can knock a hole in something if I have to. And I've been a vegetarian for 12 years and it was only to the last three that I realized that every single person out there that has said they have reached the envelope of making vegan shakes and all this other stuff didn't mm -hmm. know simple stuff, simple stuff. And that's the thing. It's like, I have to go back and check everything. Sometimes it just baffles me. If I didn't believe that you were your only person, I would believe I was sunk into some kind of reality and where I was going to have to emancipate the entire thing. And that was the whole process of my own evolution. But I know that the truth is each one of us that are around are just as conscious and sentient as I am and trying to work their way through this and get to a level to where we can all connect again. Because it's also not about flying off nowhere and trying to find some other planet and some other thing to go off to because you're going to run back into the same thing over and over and over again. We deal with this now. And the main place that we also start, you know, we're moving, we're dealing with the prisoners because that's our, that's the, you know, I don't want to use this word soldier. That's a soul dyer, I mean a dying son. 
So we use those are the companions, you know, those are the ones, those are the components that are needed in order to cause the insurrection. That's why they're chained down. They chain them down. They put them under the oath. They bring them in there as masons and then the, the, the courthouse is docked, a docked vessel on <laughs> land running on maritime law from the Merovingian king. Everyone's in there, masons. Some of them accept it, some not. Then the ones that are not don't even know what an accepted mason really is. So it's, it's madness as they chain down more the spirits in the world. But I tell you, the crucible, which they call the crucifixion, right? The crucible is when you put someone under so much pressure like I was that then they break out. See, I got out of my body because my consciousness refused to be stuck in that cage. And it said, okay, y'all lock me up, but I have another body. And I started lucid dreaming. And that's when I realized that, hey, only in that realm are things omniscient. You call a name there, it's gonna arrive right away. Here, there's a time lag. And in that time lag, the beings that are slightly on a higher vibration than us, they call them fourth and fifth density beings, like that's a big graduation. They move through the space so fast, we look like slow mode to them. So it's only again, till we activate, that's the only solution for us. Behold, I saw the ladder coming up and down though, meaning understand that this is not just about ascension. You have to know how to descend. You have to know how to go back to your roots and to deliver the seeds that you've been given to spread on those fertile grounds. You have to learn how to be a true husband, a caretaker of the land. Male, male has female and female has male. So we're not talking about some male, a male specifically or a female specifically, but to get in there and to be the husband and the gardener of the, 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 of the, the planet and the terra, the earth, the dirt, because by all means, damn it, if they call it earth, don't you think you should be planting some seeds? I mean, it's written on the wall, but what kind of seeds are you planting and are they growing up to be mature? And in this, we'll discover the keys to everything. See, this is not an unhappy story, but it's a lesson involved here. And the teacher does have no, no intention of making this easy or telling you everything. It's because even I'm giving you the words, but you got to go and create the action. See, that was our powers. We knew that the words, you know, that the words, you know, they just were the words, the actual manifestation and the actions were the key. So that's how knowledge protects itself. See, they'll never get into the sanctum, which is, you know, the key to how our consciousness actually even functions right now. They can't enter the holiest of holies. That's what just destroy the entire chain. That's like playing with the RNA. You can change a person from their that one person playing with the DNA. You change their entire generation. So you see, that's the holiest of holies. And that DNA, while being able to be replicated, it's not so much as being tampered with. So, you know, this is just the, the, the reality of what's happening. It brings everyone up to speed, lets them realize that, okay, you know, maybe we need to uh, study a few other things <laughs> and then, you know, start connecting the dots because the other thing is you have a lot of this knowledge already. That's why you can comprehend a great deal of it. But at the same time, you have to realize that it's very intelligent, this reality we're living in. So even the people that we think are super stupid, that's only to our chagrin. You know, the they have actually quite a bit of knowledge that they've collected from the Royal Society and from the Library of Alexandria and from different places to where this knowledge is actually given freely to every single human being if you wanted to know what happens after you die. And generally that was because you saw someone that you cared about die in front of you. And then you would actually go to the netherworld. That's why the pyramids were they were. That's lower Egypt. So in lower Egypt is the underworld. So people who wanted to figure out what happens when you die went to the underworld. And those trials were not, they weren't for play play. And so, and that's also what makes the difference between a neophyte and adept because the adept is adult. And until then you got a bunch of kids running around 50 year old, 60 year old kids running around in the matrix. The matrix is the matrix of the womb. But then when we're ready to, you know, okay, mom, I'm out <laughs> then and, and not do that in a disrespectful way, then that vault opens up. And then that, you know, say, oh, it's the secret of the Sphinx. You realize, okay, that's a, that's a lion and a snake together. So that's a cat. So what we're seeing then in that zoomorphication, which is how our ancestors spoke, is that the one that crawls upon the earth and the one that soars in the sky can be made to be put in the same body, <laughs> showing you their range. Like if you try to do it, try to put a cat in a room with a snake or try to put a lion in a room with a snake and watch what happens. 
So the ancestors are showing you we could take the most opposing forces, smack their heads together, mm -hmm. and allow them to agree to come into life together. 